I use a portable monitor a lot on this channel for testing out different video games and computers, for setting up portable displays, for all kinds of things. And I'll be honest, the first time I saw these types of monitors that you slap onto the back of your laptop, I thought they looked pretty janky. But this Duex Plus from Mobile Pixels is pretty darn cool. Let's check it out. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery. Today we're going to be checking out this Duex Plus portable monitor from a company called Mobile Pixels. And this was originally a Kickstarter, which was very successful, over a million dollars raised. It wasn't their first product. They've made a couple of these, and this particular one is a couple years old. They've had another one since then, but we're going to check this out and kind of see how it works, what you can do with it, and then moving forward to the newer versions you just know that they're probably a little bit better with maybe a couple more features, so we'll check that out also. But first and foremost, you can kind of figure out it's a second screen for laptop, and that's originally, like I said, that's what I thought it was for, but you can do a whole lot more with this. So let's go ahead and open this thing up and see what it comes with. So inside the box, we were greeted with a setup guide, and on the other side here, it shows kind of a step-by-step -step on how to set this thing up to your laptop. Six easy steps to get it up and working. So we'll test that out. Then it's also got a template here, and I read through this template to find out what it's for. Obviously, this thing is gonna to magnet to the back of a laptop, and you have to put little magnets on the back of your laptop screen to make it snap onto there. And if you set it up the first time with the instructions, you're good to go. But if you ever need to replace any of the magnets, and it does come with some spare magnets, this way you can kind of set this up on the existing magnets and then use the template to put the missing magnet in. So that's pretty nice to have. And then here's the monitor itself. And it's all pretty good quality ABS plastic. It's only like 1.3 pounds. You can see it's not that thick. Obviously it's going to be with, with today's modern laptops about as thick as the laptop is. So it's going to double, you know, the thickness of your laptop if you carry it with you all the time. But since it has magnets, you can take it off when you don't need it put it on when you do. You can carry it separately and then snap it on once you get somewhere. So that's pretty cool. We'll take a look at that. And then we've got some instructions in here. And like I said, it's got some extra adhesives for the magnets. Uh, so if you need to move it to a new laptop, you can do that. And it's got some alcohol swabs in here to clean up the backside of your laptop. And here's the extra stickies. So once you stick this thing on, if you need to restick it or put it onto a different laptop, you can do that. It also comes with this cable here, this USB cable, which has a USB-C right angle on this end, which is going to be for your monitor. And then for your computer end, it's got a USB-A and a USB-C. So it's got a built-in adapter that's tethered on there, so that's nice. And we're going to test out both of those. I'm going to test it out with an older laptop with the USB-A and then a more modern laptop with the USB-C. So one cable is going to provide the power and the signal to both, so that's going to be nice. And it's plenty long enough, so we're going to see some different configurations that you can set this monitor up with that may need a little extra length to set it up. And also, just depending on your laptop, depending on which side you want the screen and which side your ports are on, that gives you enough length to, to reach those ports. So let's set this stuff aside and check out the monitor itself. So here it is, and this is the Duex Plus. They made a couple of these with this particular Kickstarter. They made the Duex Plus, and then they made the Duex Lite, which is a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter. But this one here, this is going to be obviously the outside of the screen, the protected side of the screen. That would be on the outside of your laptop once it's all closed. And then the other side would be the side that's attached to your laptop. And we can see we've got the magnetic holders here. And then this is where the screen side is going to come out. So if this was on the back side of your laptop like this, then the screen would come out facing you. Now we've got four magnets here, and we've got these slides here. And at first I thought that was just to help it you know, kind of fit on a laptop, but it's much more important than that, and I'm going to show you why those things are, are slotted like this. It turns out to be very important depending on what type of laptop you're going to put this on. And then once this is attached to your laptop, then obviously you're just going to pull this side out. And then you get the full width of the screen, and it actually pivots in both directions. So it pivots this way, so you can angle it towards you, and it pivots the other way, once it's fully extended to fold back on itself and now with the magnets on this side here 
this would be you'd be looking at this on the back side of your monitor and they call that presentation mode so you can look at your screen someone on the other side of you can look at their screen and that way you can either have two different things on it if you extend the desktop or you can have the same exact thing shown to both sides if you're going to do a mirrored so once you have this installed on the back side of your laptop then this is going to be kind of the default view that you have and the monitor itself has a built-in kind of they call it a g sensor which knows which direction it's sitting so that if you actually turned it around and put it on this way to come out to your left side of your monitor of your existing screen then it would flip the screen and have it showing the right way now in addition to this default view here you can go ahead and set it up like in a vertical mode and have your second monitor you know not even attached to your screen and just kind of standing by itself and I think that's a, a very popular way of using this that way you don't have to worry about affixing it to the back of your screen and your second monitor is going to be vertical to give you some place to put you know a chat or a document or a web page or whatever it is that you're doing and one of the nice things about this particular monitor is there's no drivers to worry about so your operating system whether it's Windows or Mac OS it just understands that this is a second monitor and it allows you to configure it in the display settings so if you need to rotate the screen around or put it on one side versus the other then you can certainly do that right in the operating system and even without a computer attached to it using the the back side of this thing as kind of a kickstand you can kind of set this thing up by itself you may want to prop up that corner they did make an actual kickstand kickstand for it that I think at the time of the Kickstarter was at an additional twenty dollars and it kind of sits on the back and kind of had an origami type uh, kickstand on the back side to help it sit up nice and flat but I think even just how it is like this just stick a little uh, you know notepad underneath that right corner and you'll be just fine so enough looking at just a plastic monitor here let's go ahead and plug this thing in and get a picture up on the screen all right so here we are starting off with a older laptop this is a MacBook uh, Pro from 2012 obviously before we had USB-C ports on MacBooks so I'm using a USB-A port using the included cable and I lied before about no display drivers needed turns out if you're gonna be hooking up this way to an older laptop that uses USB-A then you're gonna to have to have a driver that's downloaded from their website so right at the mobilepixels.us website you can go through and find the download drivers I will caution you that once you go to support and then click on driver downloads the very first series at the top here is the Gemino series so you want to scroll all the way down to find the actual series that you're looking at in this case the Duex Plus and then when you click on Mac OS it's gonna ask you what version of Mac OS and you have all the different versions here in this case it was 10.15 and I downloaded that and there are several steps after you download the driver you have to go into the system preferences you have to go into security you have to allow um, this screen recording to take control of your screen basically it's it's not recording anything on your screen it explains that it's just using that to gather the pixels that would be going here and put them over here so it's just kind of a convoluted way of doing it but after about I don't know 15 20 minutes of playing with it and rebooting and putting in your password several times I did get it to work so here is the display now part of that 20 minutes of troubleshooting was it turns out that in my case it only worked on this USB port not this one I'm not sure if there's a difference between the two I thought they were both the same and then on the actual monitor itself let me rotate this around it worked on the top of the two USB-C ports not the bottom one so again I thought both of those were the same they are labeled differently but I thought in the instructions it said that they're both the same but in this case this is the only combination that worked plug it into the top USB-C port plug it into the right USB-A port and then now it works now I do not have the screen attached because I'm going to be trying out several different laptops so I just wanted to uh, you know prop it up there next to it but this is how it would be configured and how it would work and now in this case I've got my screen extended so I can take any of these windows here and drag them over to the other side here and this turns out to be a 13.3 inch it's a 1080p display so you can see that the 1080p display is a little bit more real estate 
than the built-in retina display of this particular laptop. So you're going to have more room to play with over on this side. But then you can also mirror it if you wanted to as well. Now another little issue that I did find, and this is just in, in the case of this older laptop here, and it may be the operating system, it may be the drivers itself, but when I go into displays, it certainly does see it as an external, or as a, a second display here, and I only have the options over here to change the display from the default to one of these scaled resolutions, and that's really small, you can't see it, but it is 1080p as the default, and it gives you the options of 1600 by 900 and then 1280 by 720 so you can blow it up a little bit but there's no setting here for rotation so i'm not sure again if that's a, a case of just the older operating system or if it's a case of the driver itself even up here in this driver that it does load there's no settings in this t6 usb station is what they call it for any kind of rotation that's just with my few seconds of playing with it. Maybe it's uh, hidden someplace else, but for right now, I can't find that. So long story short, it did work, just maybe not quite as I expected. And again, I may be doing something wrong in this case, but for right now, I'm going to go ahead and grab a more modern laptop and see what kind of success we have with that one. All right, so here we are with a more modern computer. This is a 2020 MacBook Air, and this is an M1 version. And this is probably more the type of laptop that this particular monitor was designed to work with. So I plugged it in USB-C straight into the laptop, and it just worked. It just came on like right away. So going into the display settings here, for some reason it defaults to 960 by 540, but we can certainly change that. So if I switch that to 1920 by 1080, then the resolution over here is, is much higher. Everything's going to be smaller, of course, so you want to find maybe the 1600 by 900 is going to be, you know, the good match for this built-in 13-inch display. But now, in addition to that, we also have options of rotation. So if I go ahead and do a rotation, and let's go ahead and do 90 degrees, and confirm, and now I can take this display and set it up next to it, so you can go ahead and use this. You can see I've got this using it as a stand for vertical instead of standing it on top of the side connector there. Now we should be able to grab our display and bring it right over. And it looks great. So like I said, this is probably the more uh, efficient way of doing it, just USB-C right into it. It's getting its power and its display right over USB-C, which is much more modern and uh, just a lot easier solution than having to install any kind of weird drivers and going into your security settings and, and telling it that whatever it's trying to do is okay. So this is, is probably a much better fit. Now let me grab one more laptop and I want to show you what I was talking about before about those magnet slots being so important. All right, so here is the monitor sitting on top of that same 13 inch MacBook Pro or MacBook Air and you can see that this is like almost a perfect fit. I think they were obviously going to target this particular size and style of laptop and when you install it it says to center it on the screen and then you know press it down and then when it slides out everything's going to be perfect. So what if you have a 15 inch MacBook Pro or even the 15 inch MacBook Air now? So if you were to center this on here like it said and I think everybody you know aesthetically would want to center it you wouldn't want to you know offset it like this when you mounted it so if you centered it when you installed the magnets and you slide this thing out the pivot point is going to be right here and this is actually the first thing that you know I looked at when I tried it because I knew that this in this case this is a 2018 MacBook Pro 15 inch so I knew that uh, this would be the the perfect style with the USB-C ports but when I opened it up and slid it out, it wouldn't allow me to bring the monitor forward. It wouldn't allow me to pivot it forward. And in fact, it was taking about the first inch and a half or two inches of screen, and it was hidden behind the screen here. So if I lift this up, and again, this is not attached on here, but I'll just try to hold it in place. And then I slide the monitor out, keeping this in about the same place. You can see that there's the, the hinge is probably about an inch and a half or two inches in side, so that wouldn't work. Now when I first saw that, that was before I noticed that those magnets had a sliding element to them. 
So if we go ahead and close this back up again. Now if we look at the mounting magnets of this monitor, if we had these all stuck down on here, you know, they were and they were all lined up the same, then you'd be able to slide this whole monitor, you know, that way, if you did that with all four, which would slide it this way. And now you'd be able to bring this all the way out and pivot it past your screen. So the magnets themselves would still be in the same place on the correct place on your laptop, but you're allowed to at that point slide this whole thing right and left because of these magnetic channels here. So I think that's an upgrade from the original version of this monitor that came out a couple years before this one did. And it does match what the company says that this can mount on up to a 15 inch monitor or 15 inch laptop. So good design. All right, the next thing I wanted to do was to test this out. This Duex Plus version actually is compatible with the Nintendo Switch and some Android tablets. So I just plugged this into the Nintendo Switch and the instructions say to plug your Switch power supply into the monitor first and then plug the cable from your monitor into the Switch. And then it just came right up. Now, I did have to play around a little bit with what was plugged into what I'm not sure if it makes a difference. Again, the, the labeling on the side doesn't exactly match what I thought would actually work. But in this case, this is the configuration that works. Here's the display cable going to, in this case, the Nintendo Switch. And then this is just power coming from the Nintendo Switch power supply. And it works. Now, obviously, it's not going to work by itself because this thing, unlike a computer, is not going to supply enough power to the monitor to run it as well. But... An extra cable is all it takes to get it to work. All right, so after hooking up the Nintendo Switch, I wanted to see if something more modern like this ROG Ally would work just as easily. So I took the same cable and plugged it right into the USB-C port here, and sure enough, it works. So right now I'm still on the local controls here, and this is a very dark-themed game, so the picture probably doesn't look great, but that's about what it looks like on a real screen anyways. But hook up one of these things like a Steam Deck or a ROG Ally and get yourself a wireless controller and you'll be gaming on the go. Now it's only a 60 hertz screen, but for a portable screen, that's not too bad anyways. So what do you think? Let me know down in the comments below what you think about this monitor. Is it something that you would install in one of your laptops? Myself personally, I'm not sure if I'd have it permanently attached to a laptop, but being able to fold it up and slip it into a backpack sure does make a portable solution. If you want to find out more about this monitor, I'll leave a link down in the description below. And I'll also link the newer version of this, which I think is just a little bit bigger. I think it's a 14.1 inch instead of this 13.3. And it comes with a mini HDMI cable. So I'm not sure if the newer version has an HDMI input. That would be nice on a monitor like this to be able to hook it up to something that wasn't USB standard. But for all the use cases that they're listed out for this, it seems to work just fine. Let me know if you have any questions about this monitor. I'll be happy to answer anything that I can. That's going to wrap it up for this one. I appreciate you as always for watching. And until next time, peace out and geek out.